Welcome to Left Right Center, where we are covering Colorado politics first on CBS News Colorado. I'm political specialist Sean Boyd. In just a few days, we will know who the new mayor of Denver is. The runoff election is this coming Tuesday. And this week, controversy flared over the influence of super PACs in the race. Both Kelly Bruff and Mike Johnston have PACs supporting their candidacy. Bruff's PAC, called A Better Denver, has raised about one and a half million dollars. Its two biggest donors are the National National Association of Realtors and Colorado Construction Industry Coalition, who gave a combined $532,000. Johnston's PAC, called Advancing Denver, has raised more than $4 million, half of that money donated by two out-of-state billionaires, LinkedIn founder Reed Hoffman, who lives in California, and former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg. Bruff and her supporters held a press conference accusing Hoffman and Bloomberg of trying to buy Denver's election. Johnston says they're supporting him because they've worked on progressive causes together. But Bruff suggests nobody gives that much money without expecting something in return. When somebody gives you over a million dollars, what is it they're asking for? I don't know. I've not talked to people like that. I think 70% of her donors are all development and real estate interests who have interests before the city and county of Denver. That's Joining me are our analysts, Republican Dick Wadhams and Democrat Chris Santa Duran. We're so glad you're here and for Mike Dino this week. So, Dick, Bruff and her supporters talked about how she's experienced many of the same struggles that Denverites mm -hmm. have. Right. She grew up poor, and meanwhile, you know, saw former Mayor Wellington Webb, and he said, Johnston is a veil to Yale kind of guy, <laughs> right? Um, so in a race where voters have not seen a lot of daylight between these candidates, how important is this distinction? I don't think a lot. I mean, I love the line by Wellington <laughs> Webb. I really to Yale to veil, or veil to Yale. Um, but uh, I, you know, I think both. I think voters see these two candidates as very similar in their in their agendas, and in their approaches. And uh, I don't think they're giving a lot of uh, thought to their backgrounds. Uh, the, I think voters like the choice. I think they like that both candidates are, are mainstream left of center Democrats. Uh, they're not socialists and that uh, they, they've offered some concrete um, agendas. But uh, I, I think at this point uh, there's not a lot of distinction there. You know, Chris Santa Johnston told me that Bruff is only raising this issue, of course, at the end of the campaign because she is worried that she's going to lose. And it's true. Oftentimes, you don't see candidates go negative if they're ahead in the end. Well, I think both sides have the support of big money, out-of-state interest. And when it comes to Kelly Bruff making some of the attacks that she has, it seems like she feels like um, she's behind, and that's why she's doing what she is doing. Um, that said, the next mayor of Denver is uniquely positioned to be able to ensure Denver is healthier, stronger, smarter, better, and and and. Amaz more amazing than before. And I think that it is incumbent um, on both candidates to be able to make their cases to the voters of Denver in these final days. So, um, as of the taping of the show, turnout is about 17 percent, which the Denver Election Division says is actually more than it was at this point in the last four elections. Still, I think, you know, with all the debates and the forums that we've had, you know, there's been around 50 of them. I've moderated many of them. I would really think that turnout would be higher. So, Crisanta, is this a matter of people are undecided or just procrastinating? Well, I think that there are people who want to know that their vote makes a difference, and uh, they don't see a big distinction. Um, but what I think that this race is about, and for the next mayor, is really about healing. Um, this is about healing uh, deep scars in the city of Denver. It is about taking on deep roots of pain in the city of Denver. And whether it is Kelly Bruff or Mike Johnson, I think they need to go into that role, um, regardless of whether they win or lose of how to bring people together to ensure that that healing can happen. Um, why this is so incredibly important is that we are at a pivotal moment in the city of Denver to be able to change the culture um, for the better. We need to have a culture in Denver where the best ideas and solutions rise to the top to be able to benefit all communities. 
So, you know, Dick, this is the second time that Bruff has suggested that Johnston is engaging in some sort of political patronage. As you know, we talked last right. week about how she said that former mayoral candidate, mm -hmm. State Representative Leslie Harrod, had come to her saying, hey, I want a top job in exchange for my endorsement. Are voters tuned into this, do you think? No. In fact, Sean, I think that voters, a lot of voters who are not voting, They've decided, you know, they're both good candidates, and it, it's it's just not that it just doesn't turn the voters on that much. Frankly, if, if this would have been a, a much more interesting race if Lisa Calderon had been the, the, the not one of the candidates, and you would have had a genuine clash between a left of center Democrat, either Johnston or Bruff, and Calderon, and had and I think actually I think that would have been good for Denver, because I think you're going to this rising influence of social, Democratic socialists. Is, is going to continue to play a big role, and I think Denver's going to have to have that de debate at some, some yeah, point. Well, we talked about the yeah. city council race yes. this last week and how we've got three Democratic socialists running in the runoffs. So um, both Bruff and Johnston are running Spanish-speaking ads in the final days, and they've highlighted their support from prominent Latinos in Denver. Johnston is endorsed by former Mayor Federico Pena, while Bruff's campaign has Latinas for Kelly, but while Latinos represent the biggest ethnic voting bloc in Colorado, they are also the least likely to vote. So, Crisanta, you see that changing this election? Are <laughs> Latinos more engaged in this mayoral race? I think especially since we saw so many Latinos running for mayor in the general election. Yeah, I mean, Latinos come out to vote when they are inspired and when they have a candidate to be able to believe in. Um, I think it is impressive the people that Mike Johnson has been able to bring together to show widespread support from all communities in Denver. And we think about healing uh, some of the inequities that exist in the city of Denver when it comes to addressing air pollution, um, educational attainment, economic security, and public safety. We need people who can bring people together to start to rebuild trust and ensure that people are able to heal so that Denver can be the best it possibly can be. I talked to um, Mario Carrera with Claro mm -hmm. this past week, and he said, really, what Latinos are looking at is, what are you going to do after you're elected? I mean, they hear this message all the time about diversity, and I'm going to be there for you, and, you know, and I hear your concerns. But it's what they do when they take office. Well, and there's some Latina leaders that have been neutral in this race. Um, Debbie Ortega, who ran right. for mayor, Amanda Sandoval, um, Jamie Torres, and also Serena uh, Gonzalez Guiteras, who, who is running for a um, at-large seat. Right. Dick, do you think either candidate really has an edge when it comes to the Latino vote? No, I, I think and, and it doesn't appear to be. Uh, I think the endorsement by Mayor Federico Pena was very significant in this race. And, and frankly, if I had been running the campaign, I would have put him up front and center at some point. And they really haven't used him that, that, that much. Um, but uh, he is, he is, I think he is kind of an icon for the community, he was a very successful mayor in, in terms of big projects. That kind of fits into what Johnston's been talking about, that vision. But um, I would have used him more. Yeah. Up next, the president congratulates the Air Force cadets and the country is a step closer to avoiding a default on its debt. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Left, Right, Center. President Biden was in Colorado this week to speak at the Air Force Academy graduation. His visit came as the Air Force announced four more Space Force missions will now be based in Colorado Springs, while the Space Force Training and Readiness Headquarters will move from its temporary location in the Springs to Florida. Colorado Springs remains the temporary headquarters of U.S. Space Command, which has been caught up in politics since former President Trump announced he was moving it to Alabama at the end of his presidency. So, Dick, the Air Force Secretary has said the decision is imminent, um, but one of the factors that they're considering is the risk of putting Space Force yes. in the same city that U.S. Northern Command North, Northern is Com in. So, how do you see this playing out? Yeah, my, my uh, daughter used to work for Northern Command. Uh, but, um, um, you know, I think there are legitimate questions about that. Should both of those be in the same city? But there's another thing here, Sean, that... You know, we have a Democratic president, we have two Democratic senators who allegedly have clout in Washington. 
they haven't really shown much of it on this. And I, I think there's uh, some political danger for Hickenlooper and Bennett if they don't succeed in this. Senator Bennett said that's why he went in part to the Air Force right. graduation ceremony so that he could press the president on this, you know, remind him, hey, you know, we want that decision on and space by the way, command. I was appalled when Trump did that, by the way. That was nothing but but a reward for Tommy Tuberville down in Alabama, the new senator, and 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 Colorado did not vote for right, him. Right, he's a sore loser. Yeah, <laughs> as usual, that's all he knows how to do. But having done, having said that, Alabama can make a case for it being down there. Now, I don't think it should be. I hope it stays in Colorado. But Hickenlooper and Bennett have a lot of pressure on them right now. So, you know, Chrysanta, there are reports that the Biden administration is leaning toward Colorado mm -hmm. in part because stricter abortion laws mm -hmm. were passed in Alabama. I think, you know, with Republicans in charge of the House now, in control of the House, what do you see happening when the president, if the president does announce that the permanent location will be? in Colorado Springs. Yeah, I think congressional Republicans are not unified on this matter. Um, of course, there's the Alabama crew who said we want to cut funding to ensure that there is no growth in Colorado. Um, and of course, we have our own Republican congressional members um, from the wonderful state of Colorado who are out there swinging. And they're saying that um, this is about national security and military readiness. Um, I give credit to Doug Lambor for being outspoken on this issue. and. Um, at the end of the day, I think Congress are going to be spectators um, because it is an executive decision and it's up to the President of the United States. Right. I mean, certainly Lamborn, and he, he is close to McCarthy, so that does, sure. that does no, help that, the that speaker. Helps, yeah. yeah. I mentioned the Space Force Training Center is moving to Florida. Well, this past week, <laughs> Governor Polis tagged Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, who is running for president, of course, in a tweet saying, if the at Nuggets win the finals against the at Miami Heat, Disney World will move to Colorado, <laughs> the actual happiest place on earth to do business, have fun, and be free. DeSantis and Disney have been in an ongoing feud after Disney opposed a law banning lessons on sexual orientation and gender identity in schools. No response from DeSantis to pull his tweet as of the taping of this show. So, Crisanta, Disney and DeSantis and now embroiled in this lawsuit that mm -hmm. it, you know will pe play out through the 2024 election. So if he is in fact the Republican nominee, does this hurt him? Well, I don't think it helps Governor DeSantis with new voters or a rising American electorate. Um, that said, um, I. If the Republican uh, primary is, uh, there, there's a lot of candidates, which it looks like there's going to be, um, I think Donald Trump is still way ahead. Interesting. Dick, what do you see in terms of Colorado specifically, of the Republicans that have announced so far? Do any of them have an edge here? Do you oh, think? I think Trump probably does, especially. Remember, we elect our national convention delegates through the caucus process. Right. I mean, we do have a presidential primary, but um, this will be a, a, right now, it will be a, a Trump uh, delegation uh, next summer. But, um, um, you know, by the way, I don't think I don't think I agree with Governor Polis. We are so business friendly here. I mean, when I look at all the taxes and the regulations, they're killing the oil industry. Their small businesses are, are, certainly feel under siege. The crime, the homelessness. I think Governor Polis ought to pay attention to Colorado and not Florida is what I think. Oh, you wouldn't want to see Disney move here? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, the House and Senate passed a bill this past week suspending the debt ceiling through January 2025 and avoiding the nation's first default. The bill keeps spending essentially flat, claws back unused COVID relief money and IRS funding, loosens some environmental rules and places stricter work requirements for some receiving food assistance. So, Chrysanta, um, I spoke to members of our congressional delegation on both sides of the aisle, and Congressman Buck said he doesn't see this as a compromise. You know, we've been hearing that this bill was a compromise. He said it's a surrender because there's nothing good in this for Republicans. How do you see this? Bill. I think this is an example where the far right and progressives met eye to eye to vote against the legislation. Um, I give credit to President Biden, uh, Speaker McCarthy, and Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries um, for coming up with a solution um, and getting it through the House. So, Dick, the Freedom Caucus, obviously, I, well, 
Congresswoman Boebert wasn't there for the vote, so she... <laughs> She didn't get to right. vote, but Congressman Buck voted against it, and right. he has voted against every sure. debt ceiling increase. And the Freedom Caucus was very much opposed to this, as Chris Hanta said, was the, the far left yeah. on this one. But um, in terms of the far right, do you think they're going to come after Speaker yeah. McCarthy now because they were so unhappy with this deal? Well, it was a victory for Speaker McCarthy. I mean, he actually forced the president's hand on this. Remember, Biden said he would not accept anything but a clean debt, debt, debt bill, and, and he didn't get it. He had, to, he had to accept some version of Republican budget cuts. That's a victory in my mind. I, it, it amazes me, Sean, that my friend Ken Buck, who I do admire, <laughs> and respect, and then Congresswoman Boebert, have they not noticed that we do not control the U.S. Senate and we don't control the presidency? We can't impose our will on the federal government with just one small majority in the U.S. House of Representatives. And it's just frustrating to me when they get all high-minded and say, well, we sold out. No, I think McCarthy did a great job, and I agree with Crisanta. I think that President Biden and McCarthy should be commended in what they came up with. One of those don't let perfect get in the That's way right. Good. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Right. Well, thanks for watching Left, Right, Center. We'll see you next week after the Denver election.